detrimentally ambitious. Directed by legendary auteur Francis Ford Coppola, this romantic horror film collected a $250 million cum above its $40 million budget. Released in November of 1992, the R-rated story follows the title character during a trip to England where he attempts to seduce a visitor's fiancé because she resembles his long-lost love. The high-profile adaptation is loaded with a star-studded cast. Gary Oldman is truly believable as the tortured villain, even beneath layers of makeup and hair. Winona Ryder is beautiful and conflicted as his young girlfriend. Anthony Hopkins is commanding as the resourceful vampire hunter, while Keanu Reeves and his shoddy English accent is badly miscast as the dumbfounded gent caught between all three. Special attention needs to be made to Oldman and Reeves. The former brings heartfelt anguish and gravitas to his complicated role, while the latter is grossly out of his depth in every scene they share. Coppola reportedly cast a young Reeves because he needed a hot star that female audiences would fawn over. Oops. I didn't hear you come in. Take care how you catch yourself. It is more dangerous than you think. A foul bowl of men's vanity. Perhaps you should grow a beard. The 128 minute narrative opens with overtly artistic imagery of an ancient battle with soldiers and corpses silhouetted against a large orange sunset. The film remains visually unique from then on, from the vibrant costumes to the lavish set design. The style is dark and gothic, but also saturated and alive, with special attention made to the film's many transitions and dissolves. These effects are especially impressive since they were all achieved with in-camera techniques, like forced perspective miniatures or double exposure. In fact, there's just a single post-production effect in the entire movie. The film also faithfully incorporates the multiple diary narratives from the novel as well. Indeed, as its name would suggest, this adaptation breaks with decades of cinematic tradition by strictly adhering to Stoker's original story, and unfortunately, it's not always for the best. The multitude of rules and world-building inherent to that expansive story tend to bog down the already overloaded film. There's just too many moving parts. Some of the long dormant elements reintroduced here include Dracula's ability to turn into green mist or survive in daylight unharmed. By focusing more of the story on Dracula's romantic desires, Coppola gives the narrative some emotional weight, but the scenes required between Oldman and Ryder just don't work. After declaring that, I have crossed oceans of time to find you, I can believe the centuries-old vampire would lust for a cute goth chick that looks like his dead wife, but the chemistry they share just doesn't sell this passion. And ultimately, a romance without a convincing relationship cuts out the bottom of the entire film. There's a lot of interesting and engaging moments in this picture, but it's not nearly as cohesive or rewarding as it should be. The most sexualized and gory adaptation yet, this is still required viewing for all fans of vampire films. Bram Stoker's Dracula is provocative and inventive, but decidedly inconsistent. I thought it was a cool film. That does it for this review, but if you'd like to watch full episodes of Movie Night, please visit the Jogwheel YouTube channel. My name is Jonathan Paula, thanks for watching, and have a good movie night.